With that is Angela Alsebrooks, the Prince George's state's attorney, who uh, just came out to announce that uh, Ronald Hayes is sentenced to 20 years, suspended to, to all but 12 years for motor vehicular manslaughter of Brittany Queen and Brittany Everett. And she's speaking to reporters. We'll listen in. You know, the, the truth is that Mr. Hayes deserved to be removed from our community. On the night that this incident occurred, the police were responding uh, for a lookout for a vehicle uh, that matched a police shooting. An officer was shot that night, and Mr. Hayes was in a vehicle that resembled uh, the lookout. And the police, Mr. Hayes initiated the chase in this case because he could have stayed where he was. But instead, because of his activities, he drove off. The police pursued him. And, you know, whether or not policies, police policies, um, they, they will have to answer for that part of it. Uh, but the police did have a lookout. I want you to know that, uh, that there was a police shooting that evening. And they were responding because Mr. Hayes was in a vehicle um, that resembled the vehicle that they were looking for. And he initiated uh, running from the police on this occasion, didn't stop running even after he uh, hit this car, and, uh, which kill these two ladies. He then took off and ran. So Mr. Hayes was a person who needed to be apprehended by the police, um, and, and that's that's my position on that. Could you also speak to the DC charges and uh, the weapons charge that he was facing in the Mr. Hayes continued to be a menace. Not only has he uh, did he kill two women in our community, um, but as he was waiting for his sentencing uh, to occur and for this case to be resolved, uh, he took it upon himself to be involved in uh, and is charged um, in, a, in a crime in the District of Columbia for which he still stands. Uh, he will be uh, stand trial for those charges. So his charge is pending um, in the district relating to a shooting of a police officer in D.C. and he is accused of hiding a gun uh, involved in that shooting um, that a relative of his was involved in. You know, we received essentially the, we received the sentencing memorandum the same time that the um, defense receives the sentencing memorandum, and you know we don't prepare them. Uh, we try to get them to them as quickly as we can. Uh, we understand that Mr. Hayes has rights. We respect his rights, and we have all along the way um, done what we could to be fair to him and to ensure that he received a fair result today. What do you make of this man running away from an accident as uh, severe as this accident? Um, I think Mr. Hayes' conduct all along the way was breathtakingly, um, it was horrendous. He, the disregard that he demonstrated not only in turning his lights off, fleeing it up to 80 miles per hour in a residential area, um, but then crashing into a car with humans in that car and being capable of getting out and fleeing says that he had a breathtaking disregard for human life. Um, and we are really uh, glad that he has been removed from our community. Are you at all frustrated that, that in spite of this sentence that, that there's no more time that he can face? You know, motor vehicle manslaughter cases are historically challenging. The legislature decides the sentence in those cases. Uh, they decide that the cap for those sentences will be 10 years. The judge in this case went above uh, the guidelines in the case that are generally given for a case like this one. Um, so Mr. Hayes today was actually given more time than defendants who are uh, situ situated, similarly situated. So we believe that this was the, um, that, that he was given as much time as the judge could have um, given. Can you talk about how the judge was saying she's never heard him apologize and said he was remorseful, but she has never seen anything, and how that weighed into her decision from your experience? I think, again, every person in the courtroom today grieved with this family. And to have him stand in a courtroom and say that he didn't have the words even to apologize, I think spoke to his character, um, spoke to the kind of person that we were sentencing today, and again explains why the judge gave him every day that she could um, in these cases. We think he deserved it. That video had an incredibly emotional response in the courtroom. Can you talk a little bit about your reaction when you were first able to see that? I had the same reaction, I think, as everybody else in that family. It makes your stomach hurt. Um, to watch an impact like that one, and then to see a person jump out of a car and be capable of fleeing, knowing that humans were uh, in a car that he just hit. So it was, I think it was graphic, um, but it did, you know, it, I think it, it really did compound the grief that everybody in the court felt in being able to see it. Does 
a lag in charges. These cases take time to investigate all motor vehicle manslaughter cases because we have to get crime scene evidence. They're investigated generally by the Maryland State Police. They're reconstruction reports. And so they're generally, we're very careful in investigating the cases so that we bring the proper charges. Um, and they do account for some of the delay we have. It's frustrating generally for families. It's frustrating for us. But in the end, it is more important for us to get it right than, us, than for us to be um, quick. Thank you. The families here, I don't know whether um, someone from the family would like to. Would you like to speak? And if you wouldn't mind, would you restate and spell your name for us? Okay, my name is Anaya Jameson, A N A Y A J A M I S O N. And I first like to thank God because this has been extremely difficult for m my family and I. Um, Sam and I did an outstanding job, and I thank you, Sam. I thank you, Ms. Alsabrook. And it turns out that Ms. Alsabrook has ties because my niece, my wonderful niece, Brittany Everett, graduated from the same wonderful high school that Ms. Alsabrook went to. For me and my family, this starts the healing. Um, my best friend told me just yesterday about choices, and we were deb I wasn't debating, she wasn't debating. Mr. Hayes had a choice. He could have stayed there, and I'm not necessarily saying that he could have helped my niece, but he had a choice, and he should have stayed there and took the punishment or whatever the Prince George's County police officers were going to inflict upon him. He should have stayed there and taken it. And that was a cowardly act in me and my family's opinion that he did to run. Um, we have to forgive him. Somehow or another, I have to love him. And I have to hope and pray that he would never, ever do anything like this again. Um, it's only God who can determine that. And the hell, like I said, the hell that he put my family in, if he doesn't turn his life around, he's, that's where he's heading to. And I, I, I'm sorry that he couldn't turn around to my, me and my family and at least say two words. Her godfather, Warren Green, put it so excellent. If he did not feel that he was articulate enough to address our family, he could have just said, I'm sorry, or even have writ given his lawyer a written statement to apologize to my sister, my mom, myself, and her sisters and brothers. And I thank you. We heard there from uh, Angela Alsabrooks, the uh, Prince George's state's attorney, and also from an aunt of one of the two women who were killed in that crash, Brittany uh, Queen okay. and Brittany Everett. Both died in that horrible accident, and we found out that uh, the defendant in this case, Ronald Hayes, sentenced to 20 years, uh, suspended to all but 12 years for motor vehicle manslaughter and the deaths of those two women. There were four other people inside that minivan that was T-boned by the car being driven by Mr. Hayes at the time, with his lights off and it going at some point 80 miles an hour when uh, that vehicle was struck and those two women were killed. And today we heard Angela Alsabrooks, uh, the uh, state's attorney, who said that uh, Hayes had what she termed breathtaking disregard for human life, got more than the maximum sentence. He got 12 years in prison and also faces other charges for a crime he committed while he was in theory on home detention, waiting his trial and sentencing on this case. Live coverage for you here on News